Okay, so we want to solve this one by using the limit process. And notice now we're going back to the integral notation. Now you only have to go through all this with the limit process if it tells you specifically to do so. Uh, in future problems, if it doesn't say limit process, then we're actually going to solve this by using the antiderivative, and that's what we'll be doing for the re remainder of this course. But because this problem says limit process, we are going to go back to the same process we've done before in the previous section. Now in this section, we, are, we do want to use the norm, and if you do these problems online in an on online homework system, it's probably going to ask you to work with the norm notation uh, here. So in this case, we want to find out what the norm is. Well, the norm we talked about before is to be the same thing as delta x. And so we have a formula for delta x that we did use in a previous session. That's b minus a over n. Now we can get the information directly from here. The b uh, is basically uh, for this, the a is always the bottom number and the b is the top number. So we're going to do b minus a over n. So we're going to do 3 minus negative 2 all over n which means you get 5 over n as your delta x, and that's also the same thing as your norm. Now next, we want to find the ci, because we've got to plug that into here eventually also by using the limit process. ci is equal to a plus delta xi. Your a, we mentioned, was bottom number always, negative 2 plus delta xi. So delta x is your 5 over n, and then we're multiplying this by i. So you get negative 2 plus 5i over n, that's your ci. So now that we have this piece of information, we're ready to set up the limit. Now, we are going to use the norm in this case, so we're going to say that the norm has to go to 0, and this is how you'll see the explanations done in this section because they've already introduced the norm to you. Uh, norm goes to 0 of, we have summation i equals 1 to n, f of ci times delta x. That's the uh, actual formula that we're going to be using here, and that's the same one that we used before in a previous section, except that instead of having the norm go to zero, we had n going to infinity. So because we mentioned that that's true, in the previous video I, I mentioned that that implies that if you have uh, norm going to zero, that means automatically we know that n goes to infinity. When I come down the next step here, I'm automatically going to put n going to infinity there to start out with. But we got to start with norm going to zero because we set that up. That's how the problems are going to be done in this section working with that particular notation. Now that we have that complete, what we're ready to do is put in information for f of ci and delta x. We already know c of i is this, so we got to find out what f of ci actually is. Now what that will involve is I got to put ci into the f. The f is this one right here, right in front of the dx. I can basically say that my f of x equals x in this case. So if I want to find f of ci, I'm basically putting all this in just for x. So when I do that, I'll get the same thing as a result. So I'm going to do 5i over n minus 2, just reverse that. Don't have to do that, um, but I'm going to go ahead and write it uh, in that form. Then I want to also stick in the delta x. The delta x, I did that already, got uh, 5 over n. So a couple different ways that you can do this. If you want to move the 5 over n on the outside and keep it outside all the way through, you can. Or you can also multiply it through. So actually, I'm going to multiply this out first to show you you can do it that way as well. So I'm going to multiply into each thing. So I'm going to get 25i over n squared when I multiply that one. And then if I multiply this, I get minus 10 over n. So I just multiply both of them by uh, 5 over n. Now that I have that complete, what I want to do is apply the summation to each thing individually. So do limit n goes to infinity. I'm going to do the first summation, i equals 1 to n of 25i over n. So now what I'm going to do at the same time here when I split that up is I want to have i left over by itself because this type of notation we got to use those special summation formulas. So what I'll do is I'll just put 25 over n squared on the outside and then just have i equals 1 to n of i left over because then I can put in a specific sum formula in for that one there. Next I have minus, uh, I'm going to do 10 over n, but then if I do that, what I'm left with here is just going to be a, a 1 and then that'll take care of that 
So I, I move both of these on the outside and then now I'll apply some formulas for each one of those individually. We'll do that up here. Okay, so we're gonna do limit as n goes to infinity. All right, so I'm gonna do 25 over n squared and I wanna put in the sum formula that we talked about in the previous section for this right here, the summation i equals one to n that has a special formula. n squared plus n over two is the, the special formula that we're putting in for that one. And notice I'm using the expanded version because eventually we gotta break all these down anyway, so it's better just to use the expanded version there. And then I have a minus 10 over n, and then this right here, summation from one to n with a one there, all you're doing is you're gonna multiply the, the one times the n, and if you do, you'll just get n as a result. That's that formula. It's always gonna be c times n, where one in this case is your c value. Now it's just a matter of simplifying it. Okay, so when we do that, we're gonna multiply across the top, across the bottom, so 25n squared plus 25n all over 2n squared. And then this, n's are gonna cancel out and we just get a minus 10. This, I wanna break this up as much as possible, so I'm gonna do limit n goes to infinity, 25n squared over 2n squared, I'm gonna break this up, plus 25n over 2n squared minus 10. So I'm splitting up the fraction, reduce each of these, and then finally I can take my limit and get the answer. The n squareds will both cancel out there, 25 over two, and then this I get 25 over two n, and I get minus 10. Now this part is gonna to go to zero, because I have a, a constant on top, and if I have a variable on the bottom, this is gonna get very large, the whole thing's gonna to go to zero. So what'll happen is I'll just get 25 halves minus 10 left over, and if I work this out, I'll get five halves as my answer there. Uh, 25 halves minus 20 halves will give you uh, five halves there. So that means that this would be the answer. So if we were to do this by using the antiderivatives, we are gonna talk about this in a later section. There's a way you can apply an antiderivative and then plug these numbers in by using the fundamental theorem of calculus we'll talk about later. You should end up getting exactly the same answer. But up to this point, we only know how to do this using the limit process.